Hi, this is your host Sobhin Bharti on behalf of the Linux Foundation and today we have with us Fran Mendes, founder at Async API Initiative. Fran, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me here. Linux Foundation will host uh, Async API uh, to kind of help the community. Um, before we talk about this whole collaboration, I want to understand what is Async API project all about? So Async API is an initiative that is composed by two main areas. One is uh, specification, async KPI specification, and a related tooling, tooling to work with the specification, right? Uh, so the spec is, is a specification meant to de describe event-driven architectures or asynchronous APIs. And uh, we have tons of tooling to support uh, users and developers to, uh, to work with event-driven architectures. What problem is the project trying to solve and for whom? So the problem is, um, the problem is for developers trying to create, build, you know, um, event-driven architectures. Um, in the past, it's been very, it's it's been very hard to work with um, event-driven architectures because every everyone was doing REST APIs or recently GraphQL APIs, and there was almost no tooling or no standards around event-driven or how to do event-driven architectures, right? So uh, I think API specification addressed this problem, the standardization problem, and uh, and the tooling and the related tooling is uh, aiming to solve this uh, value for the user, this final value for the user, which is um, building event-driven architectures in an easy way. Now, let's talk about why did you choose Linux Foundation to host the project? Well, that's a, that's a good question. We've been exploring different uh, uh, different ways to become neutral. We wanted to first become neutral as a project. Uh, in the past, it's been all related to myself, and I wanted to uh, just uh, get rid, like get rid of this, uh, legally speaking, right? And so companies and uh, and other people can trust the project, and they don't think it's a uh, it's a tremendous thing, right? So we chose Linux Foundation because they allowed us to uh, to create our own um, our own system of uh, open governance, if you want, and uh, and we have this freedom while providing too many good services. And then it's also Linux Foundation. It's a, we all know it's it's really it's a really great foundation. So. Um, so yeah, so it was it was an easy choice for us actually. How is Linux Foundation helping async uh, project? Because a typical uh, collaborative projects in the Linux Foundation, you know, uh, Linux Foundation provides you with the governance model, which you can follow. They provide you with funding. They provide you with the marketing uh, or, uh, resources. They also uh, they have a structure, you know, where companies people can become member, paid memberships are there, sponsorships are there. So can you talk about the structure of async? API at the Linux Foundation. Async API is a Linux Foundation project. I, I want to make it clear. Um, we're not a funded project, so that means that we don't accept members, paid members, because we don't. We're not seeking for money here, and uh, what we're only seeking is for uh, a standardization and you know and neutrality here. So we we have um, so Linux Foundation offers as marketing. Uh, offers as advice, legal advice, uh, all this stuff, just not the part of funding, right? We chose not to do it yet. And regarding the open governance they, they have, um, they usually offer, that's also optional. And we chose to have our own structure and uh, regarding open governance, right? Because their, their uh, approach was, their open governance offer was related to having members. And we don't want to have companies to vote just because they pay. So can you talk about what kind of governance structure you have for async API project? Because traditional Linux Foundation projects, they have, you know, a technical oversight committee and then there is, you know, other boards. So, so there are also separation, you know, that uh, the members, they do not influence the code and the technical oversight committee, they don't control the marketing. So can you talk about the structure of governance of the project? Sure. So. Starting from top, I will say there's a technical steering committee, and uh, the technical steering committee is the one that controls everything here, uh, the whole, the whole things in the project. And when I say control, is that the ones that take the, the vote. These are the voting members, right? 
And when there's something to uh, when there's something to vote, these are the ones that have the, the right to vote. The way it's the it's um, the way someone gains a voting right on the project is by contributed contributing very often and being invited by the rest of the TSC members, right? Or proposing uh, themselves as uh, as voting uh, as a voting member. And um, the thing here is that. We wanted to remain as flat as possible and as democratic as possible as an as a uh, as a project as an open source project, and that's why we didn't want to allow people to pay for vote, right? And uh, all the decisions are taken, and I and I I mean all the decisions are taken by the TSC whenever it's needed. Usually, it's, discussions are, happen by and, and decisions are taken by consensus on a per case basis. So, for instance. We usually discuss on pull requests or on issues on the on the GitHub uh, on the GitHub project on the GitHub organization, and uh, we have what we call maintainers of such uh, repositories on on GitHub. Right, these maintainers are part of the of the technical steering committee and are the ones responsible for that part of the project, and discussions happen there and things are escalated to the the technical steering committee whenever it's needed, which is usually not needed because things are usually discussed and agreed on a per case uh, basis, right? Can you also uh, talk a bit about uh, there are other projects that are dealing with the same problem? One is like Open API Initiative. How different is this project from that project? So Open API Initiative takes, uh, I think it's the default uh, or suggested model by Linux Foundation and, and many other or many other uh, foundations, which is you take members, so you take companies or individuals who can pay for, for a vote to vote on the direction, on taking decisions in the direction of the project, right? And um, so that's essentially, that's how it's different. Then on the, on the content side, on the, on, the, on the process side, we also chose to have reference implementations and tooling associated with the spec pretty much like what GraphQL is doing. And they have the spec, but they also have the tooling, right? They don't, uh, they don't offer only the spec. And, uh, and, and the model that we, ha that we are using here on Async API Initiative, it's pretty similar to the Node.js, uh, OpenJS Foundation now, but to the Node.js uh, project. So, so yeah, we're not inventing the wheel here. We're just taking bits and pieces from different projects, learning from others people, uh, other people's experiences. Of course, this is an open source project, so anybody can go and see the code out there. But what kind of roadmap do you have uh, for this project, number one? Number two is that as part of uh, Linux Foundation now, do you have a specific vision? Uh, also, this is time for you for call of action to invite members to come and contribute to the project. The vision that we have for, let's say, five years from now is that we, we want Async API to become the number one spec for defining APIs, any kind of APIs actually, not just even driven or asynchronous APIs. Why is that? We think, we believe that um, developers don't usually work on event-driven architectures only or REST APIs only or on GraphQL APIs only, right? You usually work mm, with many of these technologies at the same time. And we want to make developers' lives as easier as possible without having to redo and rewrite all the time the same things, the same pieces on async API format, on open API format, on GraphQL format. That's a mess. We want to solve that. We don't want, uh, and I want to make it clear, we don't want to reinvent GraphQL or reinvent open API, but instead what we want async APIs to become a format where you can reference these other specifications and our tooling will be ready to interpret that to, to parse this information by leveraging existing tooling from these communities, from GraphQL community, from OpenAPI community. You know, so we're not, we don't want to reinvent, we want to become like kind of a half, kind of a half spec, the same way we're doing with Avro right now and JSON schema. Both of them are supported into the spec, but none of them are created by using KPI. Like we just leveraging JSON schema and leveraging Avro. So we want to continue this trend and leverage GraphQL data types, leverage open API schemas, leverage you know, other technologies. 
and uh, and regarding the you know regarding the the this um, ambitious vision, we can't make this alone, right? Just a, a, a few of us. This needs to be a community project, and that's why we're always getting giving this in, uh, importance to the community. To make this project successful, this vision successful, we need to get people from the GraphQL with GraphQL background, with OpenAPI background, gRPC background, and even driven architectures background to join forces and work on the spec together and create a tool that will suit all these needs, right? So so I will from here I would like to take the, the opportunity to to call out to to, to take uh, to tell the community to join us. We're flat and we're a nice project and uh, you're gonna have fun. So yeah, just join our Slack. Uh, you have uh, everything you need to know on asynkbi.com or asynkbi.org, whatever you prefer. Awesome. Friend, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this project. And I look forward to talking to you again. Thank you. Thank you, Sabnil.